Yo guys, what's up? This is Jay Barr with Bar Creative. In this video, I'm going to show you how to understand an ADSR envelope in 10 minutes or less. There's also a cheat sheet that I kind of created. Uh, there's a link in the description. I would download that because it's going to help you. Um, in order to save it to your desktop, you can just right click save image as. It's a PNG, but when you click on the link, you'll see it. Just click get it now. And then when you see it pop up, click right click save image as and you'll have it. It's yours for free. So I hope you guys enjoy this. And uh, yeah, this is Jay Barr with Bar Creative. And in 10 minutes or less, I'm going to show you how to understand ADSR envelopes. Later. What is up, my people? This is Jay Barr with Bar Creative. And in this video, I'm going to explain envelopes. Okay, so envelopes for synthesizers and how to understand what the heck is going on. Um, this is a pretty basic concept, so I'm sure some of you, you know, probably have heard of this stuff. But if you're like me, you got to start somewhere. Well, if you're like anybody, you got to start somewhere, really. And uh, if that's you, hopefully this video helps, guys. Um, so here we go. So envelopes. So I have, um, I have a synthesizer called Massive Open, and I've also got a synthesizer, which I'm gonna actually reset this. So there we go. And I also have an instance of Logix, which is not showing, RetroSynth right now. So I think I'm going to start out over here in the RetroSynth, just because I feel like the amp is a little bit easier to understand here, um, for reasons that I don't really need to get into right now. But check this out. So here's the deal. Let's say you just got Logic and you're trying to figure out, maybe you're like me, you started playing guitars and drums and you have no idea what it envelope is and you're like what you know that's where I was not too long ago um, and you're trying to figure this out I'm gonna explain how it works so here it is you have <clears throat> four basic components on an envelope sometimes five sometimes three but for the most part you have attack decay sustain and release and it's ADSR so the attack is a fancy name for how long it takes for the volume to go from zero to a hundred percent. Okay, so you can think of it as going across is like kind of like time. So the longer you make the attack, the longer time it takes. The shorter you you go length, you know, across, the shorter amount of time it takes to go. On the y-axis, like up and down, um, is the volume in this case. Sometimes you have filter envelopes, sometimes you could take just envelopes in general, like on Massive, and you can start dragging them and assigning them to things, and so you can like automate processes with envelopes, but let's keep it simple. Let's just keep it stuck on just an, just let's pretend you're just starting out and you're trying to figure this out. What is an ampli amplitude envelope? Amplitude is volume, and envelope means how the sound is going to be generated. So here we go. It's kind of the... I don't know, but yeah, it's gonna, it's how the sound's gonna be generated. So let's check it out. So in this first case, attack, decay, sustain, release. So these are the components of an envelope. The attack is how long the sound's gonna take to, to start up. So let's say we have a very sharp attack, a very short attack. Whoops, let me shorten that for a second. We'll get back to that in a minute. As soon as I hit the button, the key, it's going to make a sound. So here, let me show you. I have this little mini. As soon as I hit the key, it makes a sound. That's when you have a short attack. So what happens if you have a long attack? And you can actually see up here I have these milliseconds. That's 2.9 seconds, basically. But I could go all the way to 10 seconds. So let's do the extremes here. And that's what I suggest. Anytime you're trying to figure out what a button or a knob does, just drag it to the extremes and see how it changes the sound attack how long it takes for the sound to go from zero to 100 percent right now i have it set to 10 seconds let's check it out so i hit the button you can hear it phasing in all right so here we go okay it takes a long time it takes 10 seconds to get the full volume why would you want that well if you have pads or something okay you can kind of make pads like that. There's better ways to make it than with this synthesizer here, but the idea is you want that long kind of string kind of sound seeping in. And so that's where you'd use a, a long 
attack. A short attack is for very short, snappy sounds. So you have attack, decay, sustain, and release. So we talked about attack, how long it takes to go from 0 to 100% with your volume. Decay and sustain kind of go together. And here's why. The decay is how long it takes for your sound to go from 100% volume to wherever it's going to stay, wherever it's going to be sustained. The sustain is the volume that your synth is going to occupy when you're just holding down the button. So let me show you what I mean. Let's set this to about halfway, okay? Now, this is the attack. It's very short, so as soon as I hit the button, I'm going to get sound. My decay is how long it takes to go from that max volume down to the sustain volume. And I'll show you what I mean. So right now, let's make the decay pretty long, and we'll make the sustain very low. So we have it, it's going to be on right away, and then it's going to slowly fade into this lower volume, and you'll hear it hold there. So here we go. I'm pressing the button, and you can hear the decay is already acting, and it's falling. And after a certain point, it's going to just stay. That's the sustain volume, and you can see when I drag this up. So you can see how that sustain volume is changing. Wherever I want it to stay, if I'm, I'm holding the key down, which you can't see, but it's still being held, that's the volume, the sustain volume. So decay and sustain kind of go together. It's Decay is how long it takes to decay from that max volume to that sustain volume. So we have attack, how long it takes to go full. Decay, how long it takes to go from that full volume down to that sustained volume. And then you have release. And release is what it sounds like, thankfully. Maybe out of, out of the four, this is the only one that is what it sounds like. When you release the key, so let me make sure I have this kind of short. When you release the key, the release is how long it's going to take for the sound to go from wherever you're sustaining it to zero. So if I let go, I have a really long release. And that's why like, it's literally taking the volume and just ramping it down to zero. It's unlike reverb. Reverb is kind of like making the spatial kind of like it's simulating you're in a hall. This is the actual volume. So I let go and you can hear it if I shorten the release. As soon as I let go, I'll make it a little longer. That's how long it takes to go from wherever it was to zero. Okay, so that is, those are the basic components. You have attack, how long it takes for the sound to go from zero to 100%. Decay, how long it takes to go from that 100% down to your sustain level. And by the way, you can make the sustain 100 and just, this thing's just on, okay? So that's one thing, and you can hear my release is how long it takes when I let go of the key for the sound to go back down to zero. So I'll leave some details in the description, guys. I hope you found this helpful. Again, this is Jay Barr with Bar Creative, and that is a envelope explained. So if you're like me and you, at some, well, everybody's got to start somewhere, guys, and this is kind of where I started. I was trying to figure out synth. Now I'm kind of, I love synthesizers. Um, I just think they're so cool. So hopefully this is helpful to you. And uh, yeah, if you like what you're seeing, subscribe. I'll see you next time, guys. This is Jay Barr with Bar Creative, and that is an ADSR envelope for you guys. I hope you enjoyed. Later.